Yeah, okay. So what I want to do is, this is something all of you can use, um, which is my remote radio. So I use a service called Remote Hams. So um, the aim the camera at the radio part of this will be very brief. Um, let's try not to make you get sick. But anyway, so the radio over there, that's the garden variety IC 7600, and there's an amplifier on the far side of it. Uh, and that sort of thing. But that's actually not the important part of this demo, right? Because the, the radio is just a radio, everybody has a radio um, uh, and that sort of thing. But the important thing is the software that's hooked up to the radio. Um, so I'm gonna share my screen and try to actually share, I'll show you the back end first, then I'll show you the website. Um, Whoops, wait a minute. Okay, so are you seeing something now? Not yet. Oh, wait a minute. I gotta do that and then hit share. Okay. There we go. So now you're actually looking at a screen that's on another computer. Um, I have a separate little, one of these little NUC computers that actually uh, runs the remote uh, and some other stuff. But this is the software. See, that's a, that's a Windows machine. That's actually running Windows 7. Don't tell anyone. Uh, <laughs> uh, but um, so this is a Windows machine. The software is called um, this. You download the software if you have a radio that you want to actually hook up to this. And so right now, this radio is hooked up through a USB connection from the PC directly to the back of the IC7600. Because the 7600 has a USB connector. And you can run the sound and the and the control over the USB connector, so that makes it really easy for this kind of radio. And a lot of newer radios have that. But if you have an older radio, you probably have to use something like a Signal Link USB. I have that. I had that set up for my old my old uh, 756 Pro 2, which didn't have the USB connector. Um, but this is the log file of what's going on on the remote. There's actually hundreds of people who have accounts on this remote uh, and use it. So during the day. Like this is, there's a chat window, so you can actually um, chat with other people who are logged into the remote. There's no one logged in right now. You'd see their, their thing up here if they, if they were. Um, you can actually, there's, a, there's an activity log that says, you know, the last person here changed the frequency to 3952, right? Which is what's on the radio right now. Uh, and, you can, and they also transmit it. They hit the TXD1, right, uh, to do that. I have some frequency memory set up here so that if somebody wants to like, when they connect to the radio, if they don't know what to listen to, they can listen to uh, frequencies on here. So I have a bunch of HF nets on here and also a couple of CB channels that I can hear uh, on here because it's an HF radio, right? I, this is the same radio I use on HF and six meters. Um, and then you as an owner, all right, now, now we're getting really slow here. You can control what it says when you when you log in when someone logs into it, uh, and then you do that on the publishing screen. And you can control whether your site is visible on remotehams.com, which is the next thing I'll show you. But this is the server software. Uh, users don't run this software; it just runs in the background. But I will show you now the website. Hang on, I have to share screen again. And which one do I have? Which one is it? Which one is it? Where is it? There we are. There. Uh, okay, so now we're on my web browser that's on the screen. This is the remotehams.com website, actually. If I go to the home page, you can see this is what you'll see when you get there. The client is the, the client is the thing you download to use this. So if you, you have to create an account on this website. And then when you go to the website, you can, this, this client public alpha thing, that's the client that, uh, uh, that's the client that you can download for a PC, like a Windows PC. Uh, there's also a client for Android. There is no client for, uh, for iOS. So if you're an iPad or iOS person, you are out of luck uh, on this. But any of you who have a Windows machine or whatever can, can download this and you can actually get an account and you can log in and use my radio like you're in my house. Um, uh, there's a sign up screen here, which tells you, you know, it's a registration agreement and you have to accept the terms. Um, let me go back here. Um, this is, this is the, uh, chat rooms. 
uh, that are on here. I think I'm logged in, right? I'm logged in, right? It's a little flaky here because I'm uh, there. So when you're on the website, you can see different things. You can set up your account. Uh, you can get messages on the website uh, and do this. But the main thing you want this site for is if your user is, you need to set up your account, you upload your, um, matter of fact, I'll show you, you upload your license on here too. So that somebody like me who gets a request from somebody named, you know, ka 6 foo or whatever, gets, uh, can see the actual uh, FCC license that you've uploaded. So, cause I don't, I don't let people transmit on my node. Most, most nodes are open for receive. Like you can just don't log into them, but if you want to control the node, you have to be licensed. And so the owners will actually want you to have your license uh, uploaded uh, when you do that. Um, but most of what this website about is, is about is, um, uh, is about logging in, setting up your license in here, and then downloading the software, running the software on your own machine uh, to do that. But once you do that, you now have access to um, uh, you now have access to the uh, to the internet or uh, through the internet to this receiver. Um, actually, let me turn that off. Um, and what that lets you do is. You can use a microphone and a speaker on your PC and, and usually the space bar or something to transmit. And you can actually you know, tune my radio to a different frequency or a lot of people listen. I have a lot of overseas users who come in and they wanna hear their signal in the United States. So what they do is they tune to the same frequency they're transmitting on and then they transmit in Indonesia or Netherlands or whatever and see if they can be heard on here. And there's people who use this for FT8 Right, there's there are people who use. Uh, I haven't ever done that myself, so you'd have to Google for exactly how to make that work. Uh, wait a minute, somebody wants to be let in. All right, um, but uh, it's pretty cool, and I have probably four or five hundred users throughout the world who have signed up at least once, and there's probably ten to twelve people a day who actually use my radio to talk to people or, or participate in that. So, Joe. Sure. Uh, I have a program called Hamsphere that you can you can uh, listen to the 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 ham frequencies on your computer. So that sounds something like similar to that to what you have, but you don't connect it to your radio. You just uh, it's it's uh, it's a program online that uh, you can actually uh, tune in radio frequencies. Are you familiar with that? Uh, I'm looking that up right now. Um, the Hamsphere is, it's not actually using radios, right? It's kind of right. like, kind of like Skype, right? Exactly, exactly, yes. Um, so it's, that's a, uh, that's a system that, that essentially uses the internet completely. Whereas remote hams, what you're doing is you're actually logging into to someone's receiver. Actually, I didn't show right. you the list of online receivers. I wanted to, I want to actually do that. Let me see if I can get that back up because I, right. Online remotes here. Let me just share that for one second. Uh, there. So this is, this is the list of when you go when you go onto the site, you'll see there's a bunch of stuff like documentation and sign up and things like that. But one of the things you can do is go to online remotes, and there's 264 of them, and you can see these are kind of roughly by location, I think, because most of these are in Europe that you're seeing right there. Uh, SV is in Greece, IT is in Italy, IK is in Italy too, I think. ZL is New New, New Zealand. Um, and if you search around here long enough, you would find Volcano Remote, which is actually what my thing is called uh, on here. But uh, so you can see there's actually a lot of radios in a lot of places. Some of them are UHF or VHF. So like every remote has its own capability. So if I look at this one and well, let's see, if I go to this guy and, and uh, it's, it's a, 
welcome to my remote using a Baofeng UV5R and a short antenna. So he's only, he literally has a Baofeng that's remote in, in Sweden. The critical thing is he's in Sweden, right? So if you want to talk to people in Sweden, maybe you can talk through his Baofeng in Sweden. Um, but there's also people who have radios like mine, conventional HF radios. Uh, and then there are a few, um, uh, there's a few people who have like a very wide band SDRs. Uh, so you can listen to a huge number of, of frequencies uh, and things like that. So it's kind of cool. Like if you, especially it's great for hams who don't have, I have like a half a dozen hams who are like disabled or something. And they live in like uh, assisted living communities and things like that. And so they log in, they actually log into my radio and do, you know, ham stuff uh, without actually having to have equipment at their, at their location because they can't. Right. Anyway, that's enough of that, but I thought I would let you know. And if you want to log in, go to remotehams.com. Thank you.